Hi everybody, this is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. Today I'm talking about fiber and I have a list of tips for ways to increase fiber in your day. Now this list is long and this is part two in a two-part series, so make sure you check out part one. I've got a link to that below in the description box, especially if you're one who knows you need to increase your fiber intake. Why not enjoy fruit as a snack? I'm talking about whole fresh fruit here. Apples, pears, berries are examples of high fiber fruits and they make a quick and easy snack. And yeah, you may be used to having your cookie and cake and that sort of thing, but a fresh fruit is so wholesome to eat and really good for you. And it has plenty of fiber and other nourishment in there that Mother Nature provides for you. They're easy to pack into a lunch. You can tuck them in the car when you're traveling and you can stash them in a backpack when you're hiking. So think in terms of fresh fruit instead of other types of snacks if you possibly can. When you're at the grocery store, always opt for whole grains rather than refined or processed foods made from refined flour. That way when you're home and you're reaching in the pantry for something to cook for a meal, you'll have a whole grain food ready to go or a whole grain option ready to go or a whole unprocessed option of whatever sort it is. If you don't buy it, you can't eat it kind of thing, right? If you're cooking for yourself. Why not try adding some chia seeds to overnight oats? A lot of people make their oatmeal overnight by soaking it overnight. Or you can add chia seeds to a smoothie or even a pudding if you like. Chia seeds are a great egg replacer in a lot of dishes like quick breads, pancakes, and puddings. All you need to do is combine a tablespoon of chia seeds with two and a half to three tablespoons of hot water in a small bowl. Allow it to rest about five minutes so it will thicken up and then use that in place of one egg. Chia seeds also provide a lot of omega-3 fatty acids, some protein, a lot of vitamins and minerals, and there's about 10 grams of fiber per ounce of chia seeds. Now, an ounce is probably more chia seeds than you're going to eat at one time, but just know that there's a lot of fiber in your chia seeds. Flax seeds are also another option to consider. They're high in fiber and they are full of nourishment and protein as well. You can add flax seeds to a smoothie, pudding, granola, oatmeal, breads, and other baked goods as well. You can mix it into applesauce as a thickener. Now, the important point with flax seeds is to either buy them ground or buy them whole and grind them right before you're ready to eat them. If you eat them in the whole form, chances are you're going to excrete them in the whole form. They're very hard for our body to break down and process in the digestive process. So we really need to eat flax seeds ground up before we add them to foods. Why not replace your refined fruit juices with a whole fruit? Okay, a whole fruit has a lot more nutritional value to it than refined fruit juices. And a whole fruit can help to quench your thirst at the same time. For example, if you eat a juicy, ripe pear and you're thirsty, you'll find that your thirst is quenched in the process of eating that juicy, ripe pear. Now, if it's not a ripe pear, not the same thing. I'm talking about one that's a little bit soft, not mushy, but a little soft. It's ripe and it will be tender to eat and it will have a lot of juice in there and it will quench your thirst along the way and give you some fiber and other nutritional value at the same time. Avocados are very nutritious fruits and they have a lot of vitamins and minerals. We know they have healthy fats in them, but they also have a lot of fiber in them as well. Half of an avocado has five grams of fiber. You wouldn't really know it because they're so soft in their texture, but they do have a lot of fiber in them. So if you can eat avocado, including even half of one a day, can help to boost your fiber intake. 
They're delicious on that toss green salad that I mentioned in part one. Avocados have been linked to a reduced risk of metabolic syndrome, and that we know is a condition that raises your risk for heart disease, stroke, and even type 2 diabetes. So it won't hurt you to include a little avocado in your day if you can. When possible, try to enjoy your fresh fruits and vegetables with the peel left on. There's a lot of nutritional value in the peels and fiber as well. Most of the time, that good stuff gets tossed into the trash, but a lot of times the peel is edible. Now, if the peel is not edible, I'm not telling you to eat something that's truly not edible, but like the peel of an apple. If you can chew it, then try not to peel your apple first and, and toss that peel in the garbage because there's a lot of value in that peel. Be mindful of what foods have a lot of fiber in them and that's covered in another video as well, but basically think in terms of whole plant foods are full of fiber. Try to include some type of a fiber-rich food, or foods, plural, at each and every meal. Whole grains, fresh fruits and vegetables, whether they're cooked or raw, cooked beans, peas, lentils, some nuts or seeds, can all be used in meals in a variety of ways and snacks as well. And enjoy your fiber-rich foods as often as you possibly can until it becomes habit and you no longer have to think about it. Keep those habits and then add to them all that you can. Your body will thank you for it. Why not try some fresh vegetables with your favorite hummus for a fiber-rich snack? Try a whole grain pasta instead of pasta made with refined flour. Yes, the texture, yes, the flavor may be a little bit different, and it may take a little bit of getting used to, but it is well worth making the transition if you possibly can. And there are some new types of pasta on the market that are made from legumes and, and grain-free. What and There's no grains in them whatsoever. They're naturally going to be very high in fiber and they're at least worth a try. Now let me tell you from first-hand experience, if you are not used to eating a lot of legumes and you try one of these pastas made from legumes, they might give you some GI distress. So go easy on them at first and just eat a little bit at a time until your intestinal tract, your microbiome can get used to the added legumes and peas and so forth uh, that you're adding to your diet. Otherwise you may find some discomfort, some gas bloating, something like that. I do hope this helps you out. If you have not seen the part one video, check the link below. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. This is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. Bye for now.